Sarah, you have something amazing for us. Well, I think it's pretty amazing, but some of our viewers might find it a little surprising, maybe even a little bit shocking, Ooh. but I guarantee that you will absolutely love the technique that we'll explore in today's webisode. Isn't that beautiful? Do you like this? I do. <laughs> Let's get closer still. Okay, this is Keith's Valentine, actually. Oh, it, is. <laughs> it is. not traditional colors because. And you ripped it from his hands yes, to bring I it? Yes, I did. He likes green. So I went with green and gold. Okay. And what you'll notice on here um, is a pattern going between two different papers. If you can tell this, yes. we've got the gold metallic and then we've got this green alternating going. You know, vertically and also going right. horizontally. Now this is based off of a technique called Bargello. Correct. Which is actually started with uh, embroidery, then is popular in quilting. Right. And you've just taken it for paper. And actually this is not my idea. I remember taking a stamping class years and years oh. ago that incorporated the same technique. So I thought, let's try it <laughs> with not just papers, not just pattern papers, right. but with dazzles. Wow. So wow. a new way to use your dazzle. Okay. Show me more. Okay. okay. I'm actually going to scoot this one aside if you want to take that. Okay. Let's I need take to take it. that home with me. I, I guess you do. <laughs> and then we'll, Thank go, you, Keith. <laughs> we'll go into another card right here. This is a similar technique. It's We're going to start a little bit more simply. Though, Thank you. Because this will really explain the technique as we're talking okay. about it. Okay. And again, I'm seeing strips. I think we need mm -hmm. to get even closer because that will really show us. So strips right. are key. Strips are key and a paper trimmer is also key and I'll talk about that in a minute. see why. But basically what you're going to do, do you want to bring in that Dazzles package? Sure. The one that I used for this one is the medallions, medallion stickers and you've got so many varying options on the sticker sheet and you can right. use this with any of your metallic outline stickers. Right. Of course I chose to use the Dazzles. Well and I guess you can use them with the stickers themselves and then with the innies Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Okay. Right. So I'm going to bring in this little piece of paper and this is where my strips come from. So you can see that I've got um, two of the medium sized um, medallions and then I've also incorporated two of these little heart accents and those could be on your, the corner of your okay. card or however you choose to use them and normally. Sarah, I'm noticing you put it on a pattern paper, not yeah, on a plane. Exactly. Now you can use this on pattern paper. I usually go with very subtly patterned papers okay. just so that you don't have a huge conflict in okay. there. And if you can hand me the um, paper trimmer, this is the <laughs> I can tool. Hand you anything. This is the tool that you will need to have because basically what you'll do after you put your stickers down, and you do want to have them fairly full. Don't space them out. Okay, close together. Close together. You want them close together. And any designs because you're going to cut this yeah. into strips, yeah. so you're going to kind of lose know. the design a bit. Right. Okay. So I usually go between maybe a quarter of an inch to half an inch. It really depends. Your strips don't have to be the same. Oh, you know what? I was just going to say, because what I read is that they traditionally were the same. Right. So, well, but you can take this however it. you want. Yes. And basically, you're just going to do this. And you can see already, I've cut these strips, and if we can get a little bit closer, you can see what the uh, end result is. Okay. I'm going to keep snipping here. And don't use your scissors even if you can cut yeah. really straight because you do need to get these sort of lined up again. And you can see the fullness of that design. Yes. So once you've got your strips cut, then you can take a piece of um, paper. Solid paper generally is, is going to be the best platform for this. And I always use a glue stick to put these down. Sure. So I'll put my strip, and I'll just grab one of these here. I'll put my strip onto a piece of scrap paper, place it down, take that glue stick and go from one end to the other to really get a okay. nice even coverage. The reason I like glue stick is because then you can place these down and if you need to scoot it <laughs> a little bit one way or the other, yeah. the glue stick does allow you a little bit more flexibility. Let's just get in close again to this now that you've walked us through the steps. and. I can see that the tone on tone is very, very subtle. I don't even know right. you can see it on camera, but in person it's very subtle. Exactly. Which is um, which why it works. Yeah, exactly. So you can do it in straight lines or right. in uh, rows. Or you can do it, well yeah, actually let's, right. let's stick with the, the strips for okay. right now. Here's another card, um, very simply done because 
These strips are going to be the focal point of your card or yes. an accent for your scrapbook page. The rest of the design can be very simple. Mm -hmm. So let's get a little bit closer here. And you have a surprise here. Yeah, this is something a little bit different because again, we've got kind of a tone on tone effect. It's all the yellow, but this, this, and this Every are, other one. are all ribbon. Ah, so and, which is already cut for you. Right, exactly. <laughs> so you're just going to take a piece of the ribbon the trick I use is if you're going to put, say, the border down onto your ribbon, mm -hmm. which is what I used here, you're going to peel this off, place this down, and tape the ends down to your work surface. Okay. Because otherwise you've got two very wiggly, wiggly things <laughs> that can kind of go their own direction. Okay. Now the other par portion of this, which is on the paper, it's, um, you know, the alternating right. lines, is the star. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk? <laughs> What's nice about this, and I've cut out the star before cutting it into strips. Oh. Just because then you can also get pre-done point. pointed edges yes. too. Yes, fun. So I've, I've often used these in uneven numbers, which is kind of our rule of uneven numbers gotcha. as a design element. So you can go with um, an uneven assortment there. I'm gonna okay. Let me whisk this away. That away. So you've got something else. Of course And I there's do. more. Now this one here is incorporating the same style, um, but this is a little bit more free form. And um, one of my girlfriends saw this and she said, it looks a little bit Asian, which oh, I thought, well, that's oh, interesting. And I guess huh. you, could, you could play with that um, a little bit too. Now again, I'm seeing, seeing the light and mm -hmm. the dark Correct. going on against a medium, right? Which is exactly. Nice. So you can again use the tone on tone. It's a very, very effective color combination. And I think all of these papers did all of them come out of Citrus. All card of them makers? came out of Citrus um, Card Makers Creative Pack. Okay. And then we've got the matching creative kit oh, too. Of course. Now what's interesting here, the light portions here, these are yellow vellum. Isn't that wonderful? So you can also play with the different color combinations and pattern um, and paper style combinations. Yes. And again, I've used a glue stick to put these down. Now, when you're gluing vellum onto paper, everybody goes, well, what's, you know, what kind of adhesive do I use? Right. But since you're coating the entire back of the vellum and the pattern paper, it kind of doesn't matter You're if the glue gonna... shows through because it will be an even coverage. Exactly. Just don't, you know, glop it on and use restraint and it will come out just perfectly. <laughs> restraint. Restraint. <laughs> now I've got some of these going this way and then I've got some coming out the opposite way. And okay. you can really play with the placement of that. And just to show you that, this is, it's square and just that slight angle mm -hmm. horizontally and vertically right. and you've got more. Now I do want to show you this piece because this is maybe a little bit more the traditional style of the Bargello layout that you might see and maybe you can, you can get a glimpse of this between the non-stickered right. pink paper and then the one with the, uh, the blue paper with the, the dazzles. I think I used the um, ovals on this. Okay. And uh, you're just placing these down and then putting another strip of paper up against it, which is why you really want to use the paper trimmer so that you can yes. you know, scoot those right up next to each other. Um, and this little white area? You know, this will happen. It will. It will happen, especially as you're trying to lay these out in a grid because you'll have some that are longer than others, oh, which is just will. kind of how it goes. So what I do then is, put something over it. <laughs> you can fix it. You can absolutely fix it. And then you can end up with a result like this. Oh. So you can then trim off any of those excess pieces, mat it onto a solid paper, and you've got a really nice focal point. Wow. It almost feels like you can't go wrong. You really can't. <laughs> I mean, and you know, this is a fairly substantial size of a piece because it's your, it's your card focal. Mm -hmm. But again, the whole rest of the card can remain very simply done. Which actually um, sets it off, I think. Yeah, it doesn't. It does definitely. a nice job of that. And I love adding just the other bits of the um, dazzles with the corner treatments, right. just a snippet of a border. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's all you need. And That's there's really more? Need. Of course there's, all, there's <laughs> more. Now, once you were I, a busy girl. <laughs> once I got going with this, you know, it's kind of like you realize it's two in the morning and you're, <laughs> you're, you've still got stickers stuck to your hands. This area here is the same technique, except it's not cut. It has been it's punched. punched. So wow. you can use a circle punch, square punch, whatever you'd like. So again, the light and dark I'm seeing. Correct. And this okay. is, you know, just with a three quarter circle punch. Now, what I will say is that, you know, I tried this with a variety of punches. My punches are well used. Um, I sharpened them with aluminum foil so that I made sure that they were as sharp as they could be. Meaning that you be. punched through aluminum foil. Exactly. Okay. And once you've got your dazzles put down, 
then you will put your paper inside and then of course you can turn it turn the punch around so you can see where you're punching in which areas mm -hmm. you cannot punch slowly that's the trick i learned oh. if you punch if you press really slowly things can get gummy you need to punch firmly and quickly with and authority with authority you've got to be the boss of that punch <laughs> okay. and then you'll end up with this really nice result so you can use it in a circular formation yes. or or again the squares isn't that striking? And again, oh. light and dark. You're just filling in some of the areas. It's like with, this is a little over an inch. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's about an about an inch, a little bit more, and then just place down onto again some of the paper from the creative pack. Beautiful. You can do a whole lot of cards with this technique. So this only shows that you can use every tiny bit of dazzles and outline stickers. Absolutely, we love that. <laughs>